Time now for Morning Rounds with CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook and CBS News contributor Dr. Holly Phillips. First up, with more than 100,000 Americans waiting for a kidney transplant, many people are joining donor chains to get their loved ones a new organ. Five members of one chain recently came together for an emotional reunion at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. I went in this to help my mom, and to be able to help someone else is just amazing. Holly, we've been hearing about these donor chains more and more. How exactly do they work? You know, Anthony, I think this is one of those things, you know how some of the most genius ideas are actually sort of surprisingly simple at their core? And I think this is one of those cases. So the way it works basically, Anthony, let's say you needed a kidney mm -hmm. and your brother said, I will give you one of mine. Well, even though he's your brother, he might not be a good match as a donor for you. A couple of things have to line up, you know, including blood type or certain genes called HLA. If those things don't match perfectly, you're at risk of rejecting the organ or rejecting the kidney. Mm -hmm. So the way the chain works, your brother would still donate a kidney on your behalf, but it would go to a complete stranger. In return, you would receive a kidney from a complete stranger that's a better match for you, and then the chain keeps going. You know, I remember reading an article a while back saying they even have some hospitals have like computer algorithms where they can automatically set things up. How important do you see these chains right. as being? Right, well, that, that's part of the National Kidney Registry, which is actually what's making this work so well. They have data on all, all the people that actually need kidneys and, and on a lot of the donors. Uh, but this is really important because sadly there are many more people who are in need of an organ than there are donors. Mm -hmm. So this is really broadening out the pool of people who can potentially donate and it's also making matches better. Right. Uh, so even if you have someone who's willing to give you a kidney, this helps you get the kidney that's the right match for you. So it's a really big deal. Well, and as you mentioned, I mean, there are a lot of people waiting for hearts, lungs, and livers too, uh, John. So what, what do we need to do to improve the organ donor system in this country? Well, this is a huge problem. 21 people die every day waiting for a transplant. And uh, there are a bunch of things that have been proposed. Right now, you know, you have the driver's license, so I've signed the back of mine. Right. And then I just today went online and got this organ donation sign-up sheet that you can get online, and it took like five minutes to do. In Israel, they have a, a, an idea, which is if you say you do want to be an organ donor, you get priority if you need, need one. one yourself. Right. So then okay. people surprisingly, surprise, surprise, they say, okay, well, maybe I will sign up. The most poignant example, though, is this opt-in, opt-out. Right now in the United States, we have opt-in. You have to specifically say, I want to be a donor. So you think it should be reversed? Well, opting out basically says, you assume that you do want to be a donor unless you say you don't, don't want to. And right. I can say from a personal experience with a patient, I have the patient's permission to tell this story. He was in Italy. Uh, he had a heart attack. He was brought to a local hospital, and he, he was in desperate condition. He mm -hmm. was really in danger of dying, and he needed a heart transplant. Right. At his age, in the United States, it would have taken 275 days on average for him to get a heart. Wow. In Italy, he got a new heart in 12 days. Wow. 12 days because they have opt out. Yeah. And when a 25-year-old man had an accident, he got that heart. So I think it's really something to think of. We have a lot of ingenious people, a lot of clever people, and we should figure out a way to just get this done. Well, a new CDC report finds many Americans are not getting recommended cancer screening tests. According to the report, about 20% of women say they are not up to date with their cervical cancer screenings. Nearly 25% of women say they haven't had a mammogram on schedule, and nearly 40% of adults say they have not been recently screened for colorectal cancer. The report found adults without insurance or a usual source of health care had the lowest screening test use. Spring allergy season is in full bloom, meaning runny noses and itchy eyes for millions of Americans. Some experts call this year's conditions a pollen tsunami. <laughs> it's been especially bad in New York this year, I've even noticed. But So why a pollen tsunami? Right. Well, I, I think it's too soon. It's a very dramatic. Great term, right? Yeah. It's very, people Makes a nice watch. headline. Right. I'm not sure we're at the tsunami uh, level yet because it's really the first week. I don't need the tsunami label to tell me this was a bad week because yeah. I found myself walking my my very cute dog, Ash. Usually my wife, Kate, walks the dog every morning, but this week, no way. She went out into the park 
itchy eyes, runny nose, yeah. watery, and just uh, a, a feeling of itchiness in her mouth. So this is what people are seeing. And what's happening is we had a very cold, long winter. Yeah. Uh, there was, but there was plenty of water, so the trees are nourished. This is tree pollen time right now. So it's been delayed. And instead of sort of coming out bit by bit, a little bit of pollen and then increasing, I think it's just hitting us. The so pollen this, dump. A po Sorry, yeah, so to speak. <laughs> Dumb as opposed to a tsunami. Yeah. But do you, is, I get the sense then that, are we at the beginning then? Or are we at the worst already? Did it all come out at once? Where are we? Right, you know, it seems that it may in fact get worse because as John was saying, you, the, the tree pollen was delayed. So it's sort of coming out all at once. Yeah. And a little bit later in the season than usual. So in the summer, early summer, grass pollen starts to amp up followed by weeds like ragweed. Mm -hmm. So it might be this, this year that we see the tree pollen overlapping with the weeds and the grass pollen, uh, which, you know, if you're sensitive to all of them, uh, could be maybe, in fact, a, a tsunami. Nightmare. Maybe oh, then we'll learn yeah. that term. Uh, there's an app you can get, and I don't want to plug one, but I got an app very easily in a couple of seconds, and it tells you what the various pollen counts are. So the tree pollen count is moderately high in New York City right now, but the grass hasn't started yet. There's right. a little bit of mold. Well, so so, what, do you, do so what are you supposed to do when the counts get this high? Well, some common sense things. First of all, when you're outside, cover your, your head with a hat, wear sunglasses or your regular glasses if you have that. When you come inside, the very first thing you should do after you get inside is to take off your hat, take off your clothes, jump in the shower. So you come inside, you figure, I'm inside, I'm away from the pollen. No, you're just showering yourself with it. So get into a real shower and do that. Finally, users of online dating sites and apps are accustomed to seeing profile pictures that are, shall we say, enhanced. But a new study finds men and women have very different reactions to these spruced up photos. University of Connecticut researchers showed 300 participants both normal and beautified pictures of members of the opposite sex. <laughs> men and women said the enhanced photos increased attractiveness, but the men said they decreased trustworthiness. For women, it was quite the opposite. So interesting. Isn't yeah, it? Have you seen these? I, I, I was toying around with one of these apps the other day with a friend. They are so powerful, these sort of facetune things. You can start out, and they peel back the years, right? You can start out looking like Betty White, and then in a few <laughs> clicks, you are Miley Cyrus. It is unbelievable. It's very, very powerful. The authors explain that uh, what may be going on is that, that the guys see it, and they figure, well, they're faking the images. Right. So right. I trust them less. Right. But at the same time, it makes them want to date them more. Right. So <laughs> what does that say about the emotional intelligence of men? They're, they're uh, they're cognitively thinking one thing, but I think they're making the decisions in a different part of their anatomy. To me, no comment, no comment. To me, it says it's time to change my Twitter pick profile. <laughs> <laughs> one of these apps. <laughs> All right, Dr. John LaPoop, Dr. Holly Phillips, thanks so much.